Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now I first reviewed the uh, Samsung 970 Evo Plus a little while ago and because of the comments from you guys on the video, I want to say on YouTube, it, obviously I'm making a video for YouTube, but because of the comments there were two drives that popped up when I was talking about the, uh, the Samsung and that was, the first one was the 660p from Intel which you can get for about £190. These are all two terabyte drives by the way. And then the other one that kept coming up was the Corsair MP510, which you can get for around £280. So I thought we'll get them uh, all together. It took me a little while to get these as well. But we'll get these all together and we'll see how they perform. Because that's a really nice spread of pricing. We'll see whether there's a really nice spread of performance as well. Congratulations on making the first main part of the video. Now, the uh, Intel, we'll do this one first. It's the cheapest one of the bunch. It's a 660p, um, yeah, 660p, two terabyte. Ticks all of the boxes as far as um, pricing because it's 190 pounds and obviously capacity. But when you do open the box, the PCB on it is green. So in a lot of PCs, you're going to have, if you're an aesthetics junkie, you might have a little bit of an issue there. But thankfully, because of newer motherboards, a lot of the motherboards do come with a separate heatsink for some of the M.2s. So if you're lucky enough to have one of those boards, you'll be able to hide it underneath that. On the um, uh, Prime that you can see in the video, it's underneath the bottom one. But if you're not and you have one of the ones up above, one of the other options that you do have is you can get a heat sink to go over the top, although this does add another £20 to the purchase price. Obviously it does give you a bit more cooling as well, but you do have to go careful. With the Intel it's fine because it's single layered, meaning that there are no chips on the back. Um, and some of the heat sinks, they have clips that wrap around, so it can get a little bit tight if you've got chips around the back as well. But you can bang that on and it can hide it a little bit. I would personally say that if it was me, I wouldn't necessarily worry about buying a heatsink though. I would personally be like putting it underneath the motherboard one, maybe using it in a laptop or something like that for those kind of prices. Um, and you will see, we'll talk about speeds and stuff in a minute. With the Corsair, the MP510, um, it's uh, a slightly updated one because there were the MP500s, now we've got the MP510s. Two terabyte. If you have a look around the back though, you can see that there are chips. So if you did, you were thinking about heat sinks, you need to go careful with the location points. If you're going to wrap a, uh, like a tie round like we did with the Intel, you can get them to fit. But it's much more difficult with the, uh, the dual layer ones, um, or sorry, the dual sided ones. But it does mean, um, because it does have a black PCB, it does fit nice. And in the Prime, it actually almost looked like it was designed to be there. So it looked really good. Uh, and it um, uh, comes in around the £280 mark for this 2 terabyte model. The only thing that I can say between the three, because obviously I have done a full review on the 970 Evo before, you can go and find it on the website and on the channel if you want. And the only real difference is that with this, obviously there's lots of other stuff, but I'm just talking about the very, very basics. On the back of this, there is a copper strip which aids cooling, but none of these partic got particularly hot. So that's, you know, that's something that you can kind of keep in mind. Obviously, uh, if you're going to be battering the bejesus out of it and you do have a heat sink available on your board, I would use it. Um, uh, but like I said, heat hasn't particularly been any kind of massive issue. When we do talk about performance though, although I'm going to go this way, I think, I don't know, let's go this way, it's just a bit dark. When we do talk about performance, the Intel comes in around 1900 read and writes for £190, which is obviously really nice. You're talking almost four times um, the sort of speed that you'll get with a normal solid state drive. £180, I mean the price differences, the prices of these NVMEs have come down no end. Um, obviously there are going to be those of you out there that want something massive for 
uh, like an actual mechanical drive maybe. I still use mechanical drives but I have them in a separate server. This sort of thing though, I would kind of assume that for me personally on these sort of speeds it would make a really nice game drive. The sort of thing that you're just going to have as storage, maybe hide it away but it's you know a tasty amount of uh, speed there but it's still not up to the normal NVMe standards. And then we, we, obviously you've seen the graphs, but you can see that the Corsair comes in around the three, well, it's over 3,400 reads uh, and over 3,200 writes. It's a fairly healthy amount of sp uh, a speed that you get there for that 280 pound mark. And it kind of drives home. I mean, when I made the original video, and I'm going to keep putting um, results up, by the way, so you can have a look. So there'll be IOPS there, there's crystal disc marks, there's Atos, but you can go to the website for a closer look as well. So when I first reviewed the 970 Evo, my angle on it was the original 970 um, Evo was £750. And then the Evo Plus come out, same capacity, and they dropped the price down to 450 which meant they'd sliced £300 off the price because they were using their 3D NAND technology better and there was less chip. So they were actually managing to drop the prices, which sounded amazing because at the end of the day, the Samsung is the quickest drive in the pack. But what makes it a little bit of a tougher sell is the, uh, obviously you can get below £200 from the Intel. And I would say that this would be a good budget storage drive option or someone that's, you know, wants something quicker, but doesn't want to, you know, spend the earth. It's just the aesthetics that let it down, in my opinion. I wish Intel had made this black because it would make it of a much more of an enthusiast angled product. And I think they'd probably end up selling more as well. So this one gets the, the budget angle, definitely lovely sort of thing, like I've said, you can kind of put away and hide, but it's these two that I personally see going head to head. Now the speed wise, the Samsung wins outright on everything. The Corsair cannot keep up. But the thing is, is it's 150 pounds cheaper. It's almost the price of the Intel cheaper than the Samsung. And it keeps up fairly well as well. It's not, you know, like a hair's whisker, but there's, it's close enough. Once you're up to kind of 3,200 reads, writes, and 3,400 reads, I mean, you're only looking a little bit between them. So it's 150 megabits a second on the uh, writes, and then you're looking about 90 megabits a second on the reads. Still fairly healthy numbers, but for a £200 price reduction, I actually think this one ends up being a bit of a bargain. And I would say out of all of them, it's probably the one that you're going to end up wanting because it's not the, it's quicker than the Intel, maybe not quite as quick as the Samsung, but it's that price and it actually does end up working out really well. So I did all the testing for you. That was the way it come out. Intel definitely wins budget. Corsair, I would say that's the smart buy, and it does then make the Samsung look awfully, awfully expensive. But it's still probably going to be the ones that a lot of you guys out there with uh, a lot of money to spend and just want that bleeding edge. It still does win on speed. So the testing was done by request. We got there in the end. Quick video. Love to know your thoughts. I will be back soon.